Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay, and this digital clock uses 384,000 single pixels on a 7-inch screen to display the time. There's something I'm really excited about that I quickly wanted to share with you guys. So this currently is the clock in my room. And so has it been for pretty much exactly 10 years now. I built this clock together with my mom back when I was like 12 years old. And as you'd expect, 12 year old Benjamin's woodworking skills weren't quite on par with what he does today. And so from close up, it looks a little bit rough around the edges, quite literally. By the way, the B wasn't part of it originally, I added that later, but other than that, it still is a pretty darn nice clock. I still stand with that today. It also happens to be a very loud clock, since the wooden plate kind of amplifies the ticking, and the clock movement wasn't quite the quietest one to begin with, but what do you expect from 2012? Not like high-tech clock movements. Anyway, after a couple of years of living with it, I literally got so used to it that nowadays I literally don't hear it ticking anymore since my ears tune it out completely. I literally have to listen to the clock ticking to actually hear it ticking, which is quite interesting in its own right. But recently, quite unrelated to this interesting anniversary, I got the idea that after so many years, it's probably about time to upgrade. And so I built this. What I like to call world's most overkill digital clock, even though it quite obviously isn't. But it's such an amazing project, even though I did an entire series of shorts over on my second channel showing you how I build it kind of vlog style, but I nonetheless wanted to share some details with you on the main channel since this is just too much of an amazing project to cover up completely. Main reason for calling it world's most overkill digital clock is of course the good clickbaity video titles it gives me, but also in a sense it really is insanely overkill. I mean we literally have a 7 inch screen with 384,000 single pixels displaying nothing but the time to be looked at for a fraction of a second a couple times a day. If that's not overkill. I don't know what is. And also, quite honestly, it really is a waste of electricity, but let's just ignore that for now, since it's a novelty item. In terms of hardware, it literally didn't cost me a single cent, it's all trash. Built around the very broken remains of my sister's $50 Android tablet from back in 2016, on which the touchscreen went bust, and so since it still kind of worked if you plugged in a mouse, I obviously capped it. And until quite recently, I want to do something slightly more interactive with it, like an oscilloscope or something like that. But I just recently decided the best thing to do with it would be something where you don't have to physically interact with it, since, as you'd expect from cheap devices, the user experience is pretty underwhelming and it's just not much fun interacting with a quad core processor with one gigabyte of RAM. So, I came up with the idea of this clock. I of course removed all the peripherals like touchscreen, battery, speaker, microphone capsule and camera, since I don't really fancy my fancy IoT clock being hacked and me being spied on. And I think you're dying to see what it looks like on the inside, so here it is from the back. Very messy, I know, but it's one of these things I just quickly cobbled together. Doesn't need to look nice on the inside, since it's just looked at from the outside. And from the outside, it looks very nice. Anyway, on here we have the motherboard of the tablet, which is slightly modified, mainly I added a second USB port, since the other one, which you can just barely see down here, was covered by the frame. Then we have the screen, which you can see just here, the metal surface, it's all glued to the back surface of the screen. Then we have a little very simple satellite circuit with a huge heatsink here, which is basically just connected between the motherboard and the background lighting LED inside the screen to directly control the brightness depending on how much light there is in the room. So at night time, I certainly don't want the entire room to be lit by my clock. So the screen needs to get really dark. In order to do that, I have a light dependent resistor up here. And as you can see, if I cover it, the screen gets really dark. This is about as dark as it gets, I think. Could be even darker a little bit. But now it's bright again. 
and then we just have the backup batteries. These are nickel metal hydride cells, quite obviously, since this thing is basically always plugged into the wall, and lithium ion batteries uh, quite obviously don't like being charged all the time, kept at 100%. This would kind of make it a little fire hazard, which I'm not a fan of, so since nickel metal hydride cells don't mind being charged all the time, and Three nickel metal hydride cells in series gives me pretty much the exact same voltage as one lithium polymer cell as the tablet was designed for. Well, it's very easy. I just have three in series and those three, three in parallel. That's basically all there is to it. The circuit for the background lighting is extremely simple. It just uses two transistors and a resistor and the LDR to do the main work. And if you like, the schematic, here it is. If you want more details about this, definitely go check out the entire build series over on my second channel, and while you're at it, also go subscribe to my second channel. I would definitely like to reach 100 subscribers over there, but only do it if you definitely watch every single video I upload, otherwise I get a lot of dead subscribers over there as well. Now, before I put this beauty up on the wall to replace the old clock, it is time to talk about the sponsor of this video. In case you don't already know, PCBWay is a circuit board manufacturer catering to DIYers and engineers. You know this brain-wrecking sensation you get when trying to squeeze a circuit onto the smallest piece of stripboard possible, and then when you power it up for the first time, the only thing that happens is some transistor going bang because you inadvertently made like five different mistakes during soldering? Well, turns out, with PCBWay you just need to drop the files on their website, select your preferences to get an instant quote and after a few days high quality circuit boards turn up on your doorstep. Finally your project goes together instead of bang, plus you don't need to pull an all-nighter to troubleshoot your mess up. Huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Back to the clock, I think you guys also want to know how it is actually turned on in the first place. And that is actually fairly simple. The only thing I need to do is turn it around, plug in my mouse and prop it up in a way that still allows me to see the screen, which is kind of inconvenient, but fortunately I only need to do it once. Then I simply plug in the power and it turns right on, like so. In terms of software, I didn't change anything, it still runs the original Android the tablet came with, the only thing I did was a factory reset and installing a couple of clock apps. Here we are, all booted up, and I can use the mouse to unlock it. Launch the clock app, and here we are. This is the one you saw earlier, it is the nicest one out of the three I downloaded. Keep in mind this thing still runs Android 4.4, and not all apps still run on Android 4.4 anymore. So out of the five apps I downloaded, only four actually successfully installed and one of those I actually had to delete since it tried to show me ads. And I definitely don't need ads on my clock, even though I'm pretty sure many companies would be more than happy to put ads on people's clocks as well. The second one of the three remaining ones is this one here, and it is absolutely hideous to say the least. It's just one huge piece of text slapped in the middle of the screen. Oh no, it's not even the middle. Whoever made this app didn't even bother putting a margin around the text, so it's just squeezed into the corner down here. And there's no date or anything, it's just huge text. Really nasty. The last one is this one here. And well, it's kind of lame to say the least. Just some more text, this time smaller right in the middle of the screen, and even though it goes full screen, unlike the very first one I showed you, well, it's lame. Even though you can change the text color and background color, it is very lame. Here on the home screen you can also see the slight pixel damage on the screen, which is a little bit of a shame, since there is one line of blue subpixels missing. Although that doesn't really matter, because in the clock, only the background is actually blue, and it's only the blue subpixels that are missing, and the text is green pixels, so it doesn't show up blue pixels on the text. And from far away, you really won't see it. That being said, it is now definitely getting time I put my new clock up on the wall to replace the old one after 10 years of faithful service. I'm also not going to throw the old one away just yet. Maybe I can still keep it for another 10 years.
yes, this is my fancy new digital clock. I'm really happy with how it turned out, and it was truly an awesome project, especially since I didn't film any of the build process, making the clock itself actually took less time overall than creating this 10 minute video about the finished clock. I really hope that puts into perspective how much time video production takes compared to the project itself. But overall, this was definitely the best use I could possibly have made of an old and destroyed tablet, since with the screen having pixel damage, the entire thing was basically ripe for disposal. This way, it actually gets a new life, which is awesome. Obvious next step would be to connect the clock to my off-grid windowsill solar system for less environmental impact, since it is definitely irresponsible to use up grey energy from the grid for novelties like fancy clocks, while true green electricity is still in short supply. Clocks should definitely not need more power than one AA battery every couple of years. That said, I'm going to digitize the old clock and put the pattern in the description for you to download, along with the design of the new clock, so you guys can build either one of them to your heart's content by watching the series of shorts on my second channel. Yes, they are only shorts, but they are long shorts, and as usual, I stuff them with as much information as possible, so you should be able to build along without much trouble. Hope you enjoy!